So I wanted to get into this manga release of Agartha, that being 1.5 of the FGO story. And at this point in the manga, right now we have Penthesilea going up against Megalos. And Megalos, if you didn't go through the story, is basically a buffed up version of Heracles. He was buffed up by Scheherazade once we got into the chapter. In this chapter in particular, they had already been fighting. Columbus contracted Megalos in order to go up against Penth because of her rage, because we thought that she was one of the main roots of the singularity itself which we come to find out that that isn't the case it says the battle shall soon reach its climax and then you have Penn looking off from the side trying to figure out what's the proper way to address a creature of his nature considering how powerful he is because even though Penth is really strong on her own even though she has boosted herself with her war cry she's still going up against one of the most formidable warriors to ever exist exists and she mentions this right now as we go through the chapter she looks down to see that she's bleeding at the ankle due to a collision that she just had with Megalo she says that time I was forced to use all my strength just to stop the force from that man's kick had I taken a direct hit I would have been in serious trouble unlike him I do not have the ability to heal or regenerate using magical energy fighting him head-on is too risky she knows that it wouldn't be anything proper to do brawn on brawn against Heracles is not doing anything for her and just her surviving essentially took everything that she had in her own words and she still got injured just going to show how lethal that was and that's the thing about Heracles right and I like the point that she brings up about his regeneration he's extremely hard to fight against because of this it really doesn't matter how good you are or how strong you are if you have to take him out multiple times over unless you have an ability that's somewhat synonymous to this which she doesn't not only are you put in a position where you have to methodically think out ways to get around his power all the time but also you're kind of on time restraints too because i mentioned it before with somebody with 12 tries in order to kill you they could do you in on accident and that's one of the main reasons beyond him being a berserker why heracles always has such leisure in the way that he fights it's the reason why he jumps in so indiscriminately because well to be honest he can afford to do so unlike most people that only have one life they really got to think things out he's not thinking about well conceptually i might not get these limbs back he's not thinking about conceptually he might be falling into a trap like we saw when he jumped in against shiki in the Tsukihime collab so he has a lot of leisure in the way that he fights she claims that she didn't even take a direct hit and she's still says she would have basically been in critical condition so moving forward you immediately have her trying to use her speed and her size in her favor and find a way in order to dash behind him but what she doesn't realize is that again herc is one of the best warriors that we have and even with his massive size he's moving nimble like he's a regular sized man and this goes the same for his base form too i know everybody remembers how fast herc was moving when he fought against salter and saber his size is nothing that would work in constraints against him which is kind of the anomaly here considering that in most cases that's usually the front when you have the trade-off of being someone with this enormous amount of power or this enormous amount of size maybe you're somebody that towers over the city like gorgon for example okay you're huge you got massive size but you're big and clumsy you're probably slow that is not the case with herc that is not the case with Megalos. and so even even when she gets behind him this man has already adapted to my speed and movements i've underestimated him we're about equal in terms of speed but my smaller build gives me a slight advantage for now i should just focus on dodging until i can find a definite opening and so she's taking no chances he realizes that she's right there tries to respond she disengages immediately if an enemy this huge can move at such speed the power behind his attacks will be even more fatal absolutely because velocity is a real thing i can't afford to make even the slightest mistake against a monster like this something feels odd what is this uneasy feeling i'm having okay so here we flip off to the scene with astolfo and dayon outside he says astolfo i may not get another chance like this so i might as well say it now you were once one of the 12 chosen knights of the king charlemagne an infamous hero to the kingdom of the franks 
tales of your exploits and feats lulled me to sleep as a child. You were a great inspiration for me as well as other knights of France. Paying homage to the goat, you love to see it. Oh gosh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Facing down an army of hundreds as I stand by your side truly feels as though I have become part of one of those tales myself. You have my most sincerest gratitude. And I just want to take the time to appreciate all of the paladins in one place. I really wish we got more stories of that because they would be great to see just like the round. You got Charlemagne, Bradamante, the Hippogriff, and even Roland. We still need the other members, but as it stands, we do have enough for there to be some type of adventure for them to go on to explore their group even if it's just a little bit since i've lived such a different life than you perhaps i may not be cut out to bear the title of hero like you do that's okay there are all sorts of servants in caldea heroes or not very true some are good while others are not but everyone has the right to be themselves and that's another thing right i often see people bring up the concept of heroic spirit and they ask why exactly is this person being summoned when in tail they weren't exactly heroic to begin with right i mean some people are definitively just antagonistic by nature and for one you know just given the background in the nature of the way that the grail war works in the main time lines the first thing to jump to would be the grail was tainted and so with this tainting in place you had an open window for irregular spirits like medusa for example who normally wouldn't fit the mold but you come here and it's a completely different story it's grand order the basis for the grail isn't the same as it was in stay night and so one of the main angles at this point is just everybody has their own definition for a hero we talked about that before what might be a hero for you might not be a hero for somebody else and vice versa so nobody can really say that they're definitively right or wrong they can think it they can act on it they can feel really strong about it they can rally millions of people to support them in their argument but that's exactly what that is it's all about how many people can you get on your side how many people can you convince because i'm gonna tell you there's many people in history that have not been right and they still get away with it so it would never be something so simple to say that a heroic spirit could only be one thing even in the acts of tales where you have an entity that may be evil and i was just having this conversation with my pops there are all sorts of parables at play so the evil itself might be showing you more so the evil of the person that you think is innocent you just got to read more into it imagine if all the other heroic spirits were like me master would probably be having a hard time oh yeah this is hilarious and you have different examples of astolfo just driving ritsuka mad and you even have dayon over here just shuddering at the thought anyways it is time we fulfill our task so you have all of pence amazon standing outside waiting on them angry ready to go at it and it has been mentioned that there is around a thousand right it's just the two of us against all those amazons first things first we must do something about that roar that roar being the war cry that i mentioned before while we're at it what do you say we make this into a memorable moment one for the history books that is is it really the best time to be be thinking of such things come on this is one of those rare big chances if we don't act now who knows when we'll have another chance fine i'll play along wish granting box heed our request make our wish come true and let us use your full power and this of course are the wish granting boxes that they got from the palace where the wish pretty much granted them abilities that being their phantasms that they wouldn't normally have wow is that dayon's final ascension look the atmosphere surrounding day on feels different than a minute ago don't mind the details remember your job is to play for the audience alrighty this blow shall capture the hearts of the audience ready or not and here you got day on with the full fit feeling fresh on France you hear me and then you got Stolfo with his horn that we already saw back in Apocrypha so Stolfo uses the horn the black Luna and this is pretty much nullified the advantages of the war cry that these Amazon familiars were basically using to strengthen their power in numbers you can tell just by looking that it's physically impairing them fight back everyone this sound is nothing compared to our war cry what's wrong sisters come on wake up and snap out of it what the 
Then you have Dayon over here going into his. The royal family's lily shall bloom. Fleur de Lis. And this would pretty much be the thing that finished them off. So you see, this is also affecting the ground that's all under them, even though him and Astolfo are quite a great distance away from them. And this can be legal. There's a lot of ass in this shot. We got to band together to get y'all some clothes, man. This is crazy. Wake up. No, don't stop with the roars. Stand up, everyone. We must aid the queen. Wow. Even after getting hit by both our noble phantasms they still wish to continue they shouldn't be able to use that roar wave for now at least we managed to weaken them considerably and so here we see something unique in the way that they're both using their phantasms in unison to create this multiplicative effect that normally wouldn't happen and it kind of makes me wonder in different scenarios how multiple phantasms combined in unison would pan out or if you could merge phantasms and in general how would they turn out because i remember me and flame was talking about that on court also there's so many unique servants that we have it would be interesting when they pull together these spirits let's say you make some type of a pseudo servant with multiple entities how would a phantasm look merged together and I don't mean conceptual phantasms merged. I mean more so like physical because we have seen conceptual phantasms together like Meltralis and Passion Lip doing their phantasm together in the CCC event, for example. But what I'm thinking is like, what if you mix Bao Mung with Brahmastra? You know, just something completely random. How would that turn out? Or mix Bao Mung with Karna Spear, for example. Hey, how about surrendering now? If you turn and leave now, then no one else will need to get hurt not that they'll listen but even so i still had to try you know i know let's show them our respect for the loyalty they have towards their queen by fighting with all our might and here you have astolfo and dayon back to back going against all these amazons which again familiar tier or not you're still talking about dealing with a thousand enemies though they didn't get all of them it's still nice to see them going in and getting that credit especially astolfo who needs those feats as parts of the paladin so you got the whole team is here the roars have stop it would seem those two have pulled it off Shahrazad looking like a baddie hold on look at Pent. she has started to slow down it won't be long until Megalos completely overwhelms her she sure doesn't know when to give up does she kind of funny coming from you I'm sure she must have noticed the sudden drop in her strength and stamina not yet I can still fight even without the support from my Amazon sisters and so this is to confirm that partial neutralization of the buff that she was getting you're still standing you're still standing i will not fall so long as you're still standing hear me father the god of war aries unleash noble phantasm she's going all out i'm loving these shots and it's art and by the way if you haven't seen any of the fgo mangas you're missing out man because they're really cooking and pretty much all of them they all show different aspects and avenues that weren't really shown in the game and i don't mean just because we get depictions alongside it i mean like certain internal monologue or certain perspectives that we normally wouldn't have because characters are now allowed to have that primary focus like Ritsuka for example he gets a lot more explored in the manga which is something I see a lot of people point out often it's like night and day between what we get in the game so she does her phantasm even Columbus is shocked at how fast she's moving she had an ace like this up her sleeve she does the shimmy she gets around him again Magalo's behind behind you and in this moment what we see is what has been explained back in the chapter that she finally started to realize that Megalos wasn't Achilles because up until this point in time her madness had convinced her otherwise and this kind of impaired her because that goes into you know her losing her life and the way that she went down in her real myth so it was almost like she saw a ghost and then of course you see Megalos landing the definitive hit on Penth and that's the end of the chapter the queen falls it's interesting to see how writers rationalize the behaviors and the paths that a character decides to take based on the actions that they try here you see two berserkers going head to head both of them being buff of course Magalos had one that was way greater but you can't ignore the fact that we are at el dorado they did come to pence domain she kind of does have home court advantage here so things are a lot more level and you 
you can even go as far as to say they're more favorable to her side in this case we see that she still had something left in her enough to do a phantasm that may have possibly done some significant damage but you also have the mental barrier of her background conveniently coming into the fray which is often right i could do this and then all of a sudden i'm just not gonna do that because my mental but right here i kind of actually like it if you looked into the story between panther and achilles it was a very impactful interaction no matter how you cut it from both sides i would say so i can't act like something like this wouldn't affect her especially when you consider people like her sister hippolyta feeling the exact same way about heracles and hawking him down in strange fake it's kind of the same dynamic in the end these spirits are still people regardless there's so many angles to it you know there's a lot to say about recreating the scene of a greek putting down the amazonian just like she got put down by achilles and her myth there's also something to say about you know the way that she was going in in the chapters prior even harder than she's going now but still this pales in comparison to somebody of the stature of a heracles as it should i don't think just anybody should be beating one of the best warriors around if that's the case why would they even be the best warrior in the first place so although i would love to see Penth on top i can't be mad at this outcome can't be mad at it i do want to see a different aspect of her having her peace when characters like him are not around so she can continue to be at the forefront like she had been because before he showed up she was going in you got to give her that much 